So here I am in a rental car because my FJ is in the shop getting the back end fixed. And I'm on my way to the dentist to get a new crown so I'm not getting a bumper because that's going to take up all my money on the crown because I don't have good dental insurance. Nobody really has good dental insurance for a crown. But anyway, I'm driving a Nissan Altima and the contract says I can't use it for uh, review purposes. So I can't tell you how small it feels and cramped. I can't tell you how gutless it is. No low end torque. I can't tell you about the uh, problems with the key fob not working half the time. Can't tell you that it's got some good trunk space. Can't tell you that the kids seem to like the back seat. Can't tell you how I feel like I'm dragging my butt on the ground. Can't tell you that I've been averaging about 31 miles per gallon. What else can't I tell you? Can't tell you about the uh, strange positioning of all the stuff. Can't tell you how the Bluetooth actually works better than it does in my FJ. But what I probably can tell you is my opinion. Don't really like it. Miss the FJ. Hopefully I'll have the FJ back tomorrow. Of course that's been a whole other issue because they're telling me there's nothing that they could find that would cause the check engine light. They did find that when they took the bumper off, the rear part of the frame had a dent in it, which I'm like, does that really matter? But they're replacing that too. Hopefully that won't compromise my ability to tow anything. Hopefully they get it back together the right way, the way it was when I left it with them, except without all the dents in it. So we'll see. And then I got to go take it to a mechanic. I had a discussion with the insurance adjuster from the insurance company. I would name names, but I don't want to get sounding like I'm being deflammatory or picking on a particular insurance company because I'm sure all insurance companies are probably similar. Don't want to have to pay for more than they have to. And yet here I am stressing out and worried and not sure what to do about this check engine light. Basically, they said, well, you have to take a mechanic and have them basically prove that the accident caused the problem. And they refused to uh, have a technician go out and look at it. But anyway, I got to go get a new crown. Because my crown that they did a few years ago has a cavity underneath it. And my other tooth, I got another tooth on the same side that's got a cavity in it. So got to go get those taken care of and it's going to cost me a thousand bucks and that's after all the discounts that they're going to give me because I signed up for their insurance plan that 150 a year does that make sense how does paying 150 a year discount something over sixteen hundred dollars I mean it's just the insurance games I just I don't get them they make no sense if you ask me they're part of the problem I things are so expensive because of all the discounts they have to give when they're under an insurance plan. We'll see. My mouth is on numb. Can't feel anything. Why does dental work have to be so stressful? They called. The FJ is done. Well, I'm back in my FJ. And my mirrors are all messed up. And there's a couple things hanging off the underneath that they didn't attach properly because they probably couldn't figure out how to reattach them because there were custom. So I had to reattach that. There's that bolt under there that attaches the bumper cover that they probably didn't understand I was using for the trailer plug stuff on there. So anyway, I had to reattach that. And then you can see my light over there. I had to put some new glue on that because they had popped off on both sides why they popped those off but they were popped off had to re-glue them so anyway it's all back together now so it's like a week later now since i picked up my fj and i haven't been able to get that check engine light to come back on so i don't know if they wiggled something while they were working on it and tightened something up and didn't realize that that fixed it i don't know i've been using my obd2 bluetooth plug thing with the torque app on my android phone to try and check all the levels and see why the catalytic converters might be throwing codes and they're burning hot 
I can only get two O2 sensors to come up. I think it should have four. I mean, I've got four temperatures for the cats, so why don't I have four? I should have four sensors, right? I can only get two of them to show up in the scanner. Those two are seem to be in the right voltage range. They stay steady when I'm steady on the gas. They go up and down when I'm, you know, pushing on the gas or doing different acceleration and whatnot. So as far as I can tell, the converters are working just fine. What I can't get to show up is the EVAP tests. They continue to say that they're not complete or some pre-resequent has failed or something and they, they don't show anything. So I don't know if I need to wait until I hit like 500 miles or you know something like that before they'll they'll trigger or what I don't know it's only been maybe a hundred miles if that that you know since I reset the, the lights so maybe they just haven't triggered yet maybe that's what's causing the light you know something in the evap system triggers and some test runs and it causes some kind of a problem and dumps fuel into the exhaust or something who knows oh and my giveaway nobody's done anything to say they even want it so you know, first come, first serve, I guess. I'll put a link to that. See what you can get from me. Have fun out there. Why else would you go on an adventure other than to have fun? They did find that the... Uh, did find that when they took the bumper off of the rear... Um, It sure drives nice on the freeway though. Don't feel like you're going as fast as you are. Going like 75 in it. It's like I'm going like 50. I get a swing to get this thing if I keep it not careful with it. Do I take myself too darn seriously? Probably.